So welcome to my channel. This is Gamer Dom, and the first of hopefully um, a sort of an occasional series of videos around my real passion uh, in terms of a hobby, and, and that being tabletop games. So some people might have seen the videos I do for World of Tanks, um, and I love that game, but it's very much a stopgap for me before I can get my figures out on the table and play proper games, proper toy soldier games. Arr. So um, I thought while I'm doing videos, and I like doing my videos for my um, gaming channel, I thought let's look at doing a video on um, what kind of techniques, games maybe, if I can do some... Uh, refights, that sort of thing. But I thought I'd start with a video on cheating at painting. <laughs> Those of you who know me will know that I nothing, I like nothing better than to uh, take an easy route of doing something. I'm not the sort of person that's going to spend hours and hours and hours doing something if you can do it quickly and easily um, in another route. So this came out of the fact I was playing a game uh, the other week at my local wargaming club and um, playing 28mm Second World War bolt action game. That's the thing at the moment in our club that everyone's excited about and I'm enjoying playing immensely. And I bought a German, a whole load of German troops, 28mm plastic uh, Warlords figures online and um, mostly they were unpainted um, and I basically spent no more than a couple of weeks painting i don't know about 60 figures something like that bang them out got them on the table and and one of the guys i play with uh, said to me did you paint them and i said yeah they're terrible aren't they and he said no they're not bad at all you know really not bad at all now i'm not a painter and i thought well actually you know what they're not too bad at all um and i thought well <sighs> let me do a video explaining how i paint and it ha might help some other people who are struggling to get their figures from this to this in as quick a time as humanly possible, where they still look reasonably good and you're not too ashamed of them on the figure. Now, this is one of my new Japanese army figures. I don't think he's too bad. I'm quite pleased with him. Now, a group of, a squad of eight or ten of these painted from fully from that stage to that stage, battle ready, go on the table, take me about two days. Um, now, again, I should just should put a health warning here. This video is not for the, the diehard painters, the people who love to paint, who enjoy painting, who do a fantastic job of painting. Um, that's not what I do. My sole objective in painting figures and making models is to get them from that format to that format as quickly as possible so that I can start playing with them. I know people, there's a guy at my club, Italian guy, Silvio, who loves the whole bit of the, the research in the units, doing the, the design of the uniforms, the different epaulets and all that kind of thing for the regiment that he's doing. And his figures are beautiful, absolute works of art. Another friend of mine, Nick, a, a fantastic painter. I'm not them. Um, I My sole ambition is to get these figures ready to get on the table so they look half decent and so I'm not ashamed of using them. Um, not to win a beauty contest, but to win the actual battlefield contest, if you like. So my um, aim is to take that and get it to that as quickly as possible. So that's what this video is all about. So if that interests you, hang around. Okay, so um, first things first. You get your figure. This one is a metal figure thing. I think it's from First Call. I forget exactly. Apologies. Um, but it doesn't really matter. There's some fabulous figure manufacturers out there. Really good figures. I bought this because I needed a load of Japanese and I wanted them to be fairly cheap. Um, and a bag. These worked out about a pound a figure. Something like that. I also picked up a box of... Uh, Warlords, Japanese figures. Um, my local uh, shop was selling all their bolt action stuff off, 50% off. So, you know, a box of 30 figures for 20, uh, 13 pounds, I think it was. So that's the next thing. And I'll use these for um, 
these will be the, the general foot sloggers. And then I use the plastics, I think, and make them up as um, you know, uh, combat engineers and that sort of thing. I'll see how, uh, how I feel. But, um, you know, I just wanted to get started quickly. So I bought the, a load of these metal figures and they're, they're not too bad. They come out all right. Um, variety of poses. Officers. I've added a rifle from a plastic rifle I happen to have around to put on him. That's one of the officers, obviously. So, um, yeah, so not bad figures. Anyway, so first step with any figure you buy um, and before you start painting is prepping it, getting ready to paint. Uh, really, really important. Um, it's one of the things that beginners get very wrong. Um, took me a while to realize the importance of it. Um, but you need to deflash the figure. So this figure is not too bad, and I've done the little bit that there was, but you can just see a little, I don't know whether you can on the video, you can just see a little join in the figure where the two halves of the mould went. Um, and you get this on all figures because the way they make the figure, it's very interesting how they do it, um, it's made in two halves. And they put the two halves together, put the liquid in, whether it's liquid metal or liquid plastic, whatever it is in, and then uh, take them. Obviously, once it sets, they then take it out of the mold by splitting the two halves apart. Now, as the molds get older and wear, the gaps get more pronounced between the two bits. Eventually, they have to throw them away and start again. Um, but it does mean that there's always a little bit of an edge down the figure. So all you do need to do with a sharp knife and being very careful is just scrape that edge off so that it's not obvious. They're pretty good these days about um, hiding the, the edges. So this one, it probably looks like, in fact it does, it looks like it runs all the way down here and down through here. So it's actually quite hard to see, but it's well worth spending a little bit of time just working off those lines don't try not to <laughs> rub off any detail that's a bayonet there um, so i don't want to remove that but um just uh just work your knife a, a little craft knife sharp knife could be a stanley knife if you want but something sharp um, and just gently take off the little bits of flesh flashing that there is around the edges once you've done that, and probably before you've done that actually, make sure you've stuck it to something really hard. Now, what I tend to do, again, this is a Dom's cheat. Um, a lot of people I see online will use a, an old paint bottle or a cork or something, and they'll stick it on the top, which gives them something more to hold on to. Now, uh, my problem with that is whenever I stick things on there, um, you know, you'd have to use something like blue tack. A number of times it falls off just at the wrong moment or what have you. And and actually, you know what? I don't find this a problem to, to hold the base. I mean, I have arthritis in my fat little fingers uh, and I don't have a problem holding that while I'm painting it. So I find just sticking it on the base is enough. Um, this one has a, you can see a wooden, a wooden base, which is basically the same size as the ones you get with Warlords. Um, just a bit fatter. And I bought... A whole bunch of these in a bag online on eBay. I can't remember now. Um, MDF circles, and I've got loads of them. I've got loads of different sizes of bases for all different types of figures I use. Um, and I just stuck that figure down using super glue. You can see here, just straight onto the wood, nothing more. Now, obviously, when you do that, you see you've got a bit of a ridge where the figure base doesn't marry onto the onto the wooden base. So all I've done then is to take some polyfiller, just household polyfiller, um, mix it with a tiny bit of water and sm spread it on the base. Just like you would plastering a wall right up to the edge of the figure, making sure that I hide that ridge between the figure base and the wooden base. Let it set, let it dry, it only takes a short while to dry. Generally, I've got a production line going. I'll generally have some figures, you know, like this one, partly painted, partly ready to go. Um, some based up, ready to go. The next lot are here, ready to go. So these need the basing done. So the next stage with those is to is to put the, the polyfiller in, let that set. Uh, these are now ready for the next stage. 
because that's well and truly set. These have had part of the next stage done. So that's what I tend to do, a production line. Um, and that's the way I get these things churned out to that sort of standard as quickly as possible. Okay, so you polyfill your base. You've got it all ready to go. You've got something reasonably stable to hold on to. Figure won't fall off, apart from if you drop it, <laughs> which is vital. What next? Well, next thing is priming. So getting the figure ready to accept paint. Now, there is all kinds of talk online, videos. You can talk about priming and how it's best to do it. Some people spray paint it. Some people hand paint it with a brush. Some people use spray cans. Um, now, of course, I'm the sort of person that takes shortcuts. So for me, spray cans. That's the way to go. That's what I do. I like a spray can to, to undercoat and prepare my figure and prime it. So what is priming? Well, basically, it's putting a base layer of paint down on the, the raw metal, raw plastic of the figure so that then all your subsequent painting will have something to adhere to, something to stick to and make the colours work better. Now, again, beginner's lesson here is uh, if you want to improve, one thing you can really do to improve, A, how well, how durable the um, the paint is and how how long the figure survives the rigors of being put in boxes and what have you um, it's largely down to how much how how well you prime a figure and also how well you varnish it that's really the key thing so well worth doing a really good job with prepping the figure with an with a proper primer now again one of the things there are there's lots of discussions online about how best to prime and what colors to use and what have you and for years i used one of two methods for, first of all i'd use a, well, both were using a spray can one i'd use was a white undercoat so complete just pure white undercoat all over the figure with a spray can um, or i'd use a black those were the two methods i used um, the difference were if i wanted a figure that was going to hold a bit more color be a bit brighter at the end I'd use the white. If I wanted it to dull all the colours down to make it darker, I'd use the black. You know, Second World War figures probably use black because uniforms tend to be darker. Um, Napoleonic say I'd probably use a white spray because you want to bring out the nice colours that are in the uniforms, etc. So that's what I did. And then I got thinking about this and, and maybe it was watching some videos. I don't know. I watch a lot of videos online um techniques of helping to do um and i thought well why do i use black or white why not use a color so that's what i started to do so this one actually is late war german dunkelskelts this is the base coat that all german tanks had for instance um that makes a really good color for excuse me making a big noise that makes a really good colour for a Japanese uniform. <laughs> it does, trust me. So what I've started to do is cheat. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Is rather than putting a base coat over and then putting the uniform colour over, I'll spray the figure pretty much as close as I can to the colour I want the figure to ultimately do. And that's what I've done here. This has no undercoat. This figure is basically just primed and then features like skin tone, the gun color, the, the webbing, uh, this bedroll have all been touched up subsequently. But basically the uniform has only been painted once. I've touched it up where I you know, subsequently was a bit slapdash with um, uh, um, skin tone and so forth. So, you, you know, you don't get that don't get skin tone up the arm where it should be uniform etc but basically that figure has just had one coat of undercoat prime that is it so that's what I do so I take this figure outside and I spray with my spray can making sure I give it plenty of shakes I spray a job lot of about eight or nine ten maybe of these figures and make sure they've got a good uh, application of paint don't get too close, don't get too far, but 
um, get you'll get used to the distance and what have you. Make sure you shake your can up really, really, really well. Get the figure um, nicely coated in the paint. Not so much that it obscures all the um, detail and then let it dry. So that's what we'll do next. Back in a moment. Okay, so that figure is primed with spray. We did a job lot of uh, several of them here, all done at the same time. Because it's about speed and about batch painting. Now the spray I used on these fellas was this one. This is a plastic soldier uh, spray. This is Army Late War German Dunkel Gelled, which is fine, absolutely fine. Um, I have also used this thing. This is Army Painter Narcotic Flesh, hmm. which has the right sort of colour. And to put a bit of variety, I've even used this one. Uh, this is Army Primer uh, Desert Yellow. Either or mixture of the both. Uh, of all of them is absolutely fine. You just want to make sure that the the coating is good. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the thing to to watch out for um, is often you'll find that you've missed underneath things where they're sort of yeah underneath the guns here and up underneath the the arms um, because of the way you spray you tend to spray at this sort of direction and it's hard with especially with the bases already attached to get up underneath them so just be aware of that um and you know if need be just touch them up a bit i've got some japanese uh, uniform paint here which i just touched up underneath on the bits that i've missed uh, if you've used sand then use a the sand paint whatever um the end of the day, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just see a little bit of silver showing through there, but that doesn't matter. That will be absolutely, we'll cover that up beautifully later on. So, first things first, I'm going to start again. You know, you get the the painting uh, police. Will, will, well, I mean, to be honest, they would have given up on me already. Um, this is a reminder. This is just to get figures on the table that you feel half decent about showing that you don't feel too embarrassed about right that's all it is um they're not going to win painting competitions but they're going to get your figures on the table um you know i think i said i know plenty of people who are terrific painters of figures absolutely beautiful painters of figures but they'll spend months producing a regiment or a company or a platoon and Life's too short. I want to. I've got my figures. I've got enough unpainted figures. I just want to get as, them on the table as quickly uh, as I possibly can to a point where I'm not embarrassed about them. Um, you know, I reckon my, I recognise my limitations, um, and one of them is uh, me meticulous. I'm not a meticulous person. I think to be a really good painter, you have to be completely meticulous. Um, so I know that I'm not, and I know that even if I spent weeks painting these figures, they still wouldn't look as good as some of these people who do them. Um, so I've given up on that kind of idea long ago, and I'm just going to use, just going to get them to a point where, as I say, I just get them on the table. That's my goal. I'm into wargaming for the history and the battles and fighting it out on the tabletop. That's what I love. Um, the painting element is a means to an end. If I could afford to buy all my figures ready painted, I'd probably do that. Except I wouldn't recognise them. Um, so I'm just putting... I'm using a pale flesh. Um, mainly because this process I'm going to take you through... Um, dulls them down so you start with a lighter color than you will probably already need or what you sort of think you're going to need and um, it'll dumb it down there you go again painting police will be giving me a hard time i'm sure if they got this far 
about, oh, you should water down your paint and blah, blah, blah. I've tried all that. You should have a palette. I've tried that. I can't be asked. I've got a palette around here somewhere. Never use it. Well, I did use it for a while, and it, it does help. But I find that it just slows the process down. And I, I, it's all about speed with me. Oops. So that was, um, God knows where I pick up these paints. I pick up paints all over the place. This is scale color, pale skin. But it was quite useful color for, you know, orientally type troops. Um, and as I say, it, it, once you've painted it, it dulls down anyway. It bright, it it's darker. So, so that's the skin tone done on that model. Now we're going to do move him out of the way. Again, this will have this will put people in um, the decent painters having epilepsy, epileptic fits. Um, this is artist paint, acrylic artist paint. You can see I've got all sorts of model paint here. Um, and I know I've I've seen videos. I've seen good painters talking about how um, don't use artist paint because it's not it's not designed. Oops, sorry, just kicked a can there. It's not designed for painting miniatures, and I get that, but I ignore it. Um, you know, I, I, at the end of the day. If it adheres to the figure well enough, so I can see the definitions, I can see the um, the elements I want to see on my figure, don't mind. These paints are considerably cheaper than the standard paints. So I tend to buy the sort of paints that I use a lot of, your browns, your blacks, um, there's a sand one here that I'm going to use in a minute, um, which I use a lot of, mainly because I've been working through my Japanese army. Um, and yeah, it, it's not a perfect um, coating, but as I've said already, this is about taking, uh, making it simple. And we have another step coming at the end, which will help forgive all sorts of sins in the painting process. So we're just doing the stock of the gun. There's a, um, a sling runs through there. You can see the trigger. I'm just doing, I'm going to do the end of the barrel. So I'm going to leave, put them silvery. Um, I'm going to change, do his bag a different color. I'll do his feet, his shoes, the same color again. Don't worry about spreading it all over the place. You know, within reason, I don't want to slap it up all the way up his figure. I'm just trying to get the paint in the right kind of area. So it's got it's got the basic stuff there. Nearly done. So I'm going to do a satchel and a different brown. Just because it'll look a bit odd otherwise. Let's do his straps. Again, I'm just really touching the very top of the of the actual strap. I'm not actually trying to shade it all in or get the different. We're just literally getting paint on the raised bits of the Of those straps. It's got a bayonet holder down there. Just, just do his water bottle this colour. It's when you're doing this when you're as cack handed as I am that you um you discover that you're painting a bit of flashing. Right, let's just do the rest of this gun. There we go. Near enough. There we go. 
It's coming together. Now, if his flesh, if his hair was more pronounced, I'd probably bother painting it. But we're not going to see it by the time we've finished, so I'm not going to bother with his hair. Um, again, this is about, if you come for a video on how to paint per perfectly, there's a million of them out there on the YouTube. This is about getting the figures on the table as quickly as possible, in uh, so they look reasonably good, or good enough that you can feel not too embarrassed about. So, we've done that. I'm going to do... Um, that other bag, I'm going to use this earth, dark earth colour. Always give your paints a bit of a shake. I have actually got, to make you all laugh, maybe it won't. A nail lacquer shaker. <laughs> lacquer shaker. You strap your paint in there and it shakes it for you. <laughs> Available on Amazon, probably eBay, and goodness knows where else, um, for a few quid, literally a couple of quid. Um, and um, it's great. It's really, really useful. Especially I find um, some of these sort of model colour paints seem to separate very much quicker than the rest. And I don't know about you, but I get fed up just sitting there shaking, shaking, shaking. So I put it in that contraption for a little bit, a couple of seconds, and it shakes it all for me. Let's do that. So just doing, just want a little bit of different colour. Now you can see I haven't done all that strap. But don't worry about it. I mean, I've done the top half of it, but you can see the edge there still. Whoops. So that's why you should stick it to a figure or another bottle or something. Okay. So we've got a dip, bit of different colour, different brown. It's fine. That will do. That should be my motto. That will do. Uh, so, incidentally, this rack is also for putting nail varnish in. Seven pounds something or other from to eBay or Amazon, I forget now. Just brilliant. Just brilliant. Why do you need all the proper expensive kit? This holds it just as well. Uh, right, so we've done all the brown. We've done all the car key colour. We've done this flesh tone. Next up we need to do the rifle, or the rest of the rifle. Oops, a bit more paint than I needed there. This is another one I picked up, Game Colour Gun Metal. Love it. Absolutely brilliant. So, again, not going to be too precise with this. I'm not going to do the bayonet in a different colour to the rest of it. I'm just going to paint the barrel like this. Slap on the paint. Within reason, obviously, I don't want to absolutely swamp the figure. And I'm just going to draw the brush across the top of the barrel. Which just sort of Gives that illusion of the the gun barrel. Is there a trigger there? I think there is. Just put that in. Not sure that will show up anyway at the end of the day. You know, by the time you've got your figure in amongst all these buddies, and they're on the on the battlefield, and you're looking at them from several feet away. The fact that it's got the wrong colour epaulet or that it hasn't got his eyes coloured or what have you. It's not going to matter a jot. Sure, if you're going to display it in a display cabinet with... There we go. 
in a hobby shop or put it in for a competition, you probably want to make an effort. But I'm not. There we go. So, it's coming together. Clean the old brushy brushy. Um, next up, I need to do... This is one of my favourite paints. This is another one of the art, um, um, art shop stuff. Sandstone. Use it on all sorts of things. I've almost run out, actually. Um, just brilliant. Just brilliant colour. Just love it. Whoops. Um, so I'm just going to do the chin strap here. Again, I'm just getting colour on the edge there. I'm not really bothered about the actual creases. I think I might have to do his hair there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and I shall also use the same colour to do the gun sling, a rifle sling. Hmm. Just on the tip of the brush. There we go. And you'll get used to what bits show up the most on the figure. So we've done the sling, we've done um ribbony thing that holds his helmet on done the, the gun gun sling done his bags one other little element to do just flip that back on for a minute i'm going to use that again in a second um this model has a little star on his helmet so i'm going to get out this uh it's a matte yellow revel this is actually model paint again just right on the tip of the brush just that whether you can make it out in the video actually that's not formed the tip quite nicely there we go just going to touch the the star model on or star figures today is so good quality they're incredibly forgiving and they have so much definition. When I started gaming, historical gaming anyway, pretty much the only figures you could buy were Henchcliffe and minifigs. And they're very limited ranges, very limited um, uh, scales. Um, and um, all the poses are the same, so you get your Napoleonic infantrymen and they'd all be standing um, march position, every single one of them. And so there's no variation of them. Um, and then, you know, you'd have all sorts of other types that basically were exactly the same position, um, it, you know, in a very, very basic model. I mean, these these are not expensive models, these figures, um, but they're... they're the definition on them is absolutely fantastic. Uh, no, so you get some of the plastic figures you can get. This is uh, Warlord figures. I mean, these are just beautiful. They're really, really good. These aren't the very best, but these are not bad. But they're, they're not bad. And again, they look fine as a massed uh, regiment. So, I should really allow that to, to dry properly. But I'm not going to do that. Because... Can I mention <laughs> this slap dash? Um, so yeah, no, just for the sake of the video, really, I'm going to just do my next step. So I'm getting a bit of my precious sandstone paint, and I'm going to dry brush. So those of you who don't know how br dry brushing, I'm sure most people will do. Um, you get a little bit on the end of your brush, you rub it off, and then you just drag it over the model. 
the idea is just to put a little bit of light lightening on the exposed raised bits of the figure. So we do it on his, are they called putties, whatever they are, the things on his leggings there. And I don't know whether you can see on the video, it might not be high enough quality, but you can just make out where it's putting a little bit of a, like a shine, like a, there we go, nice, you see that? It's not looking too bad, actually. I think, you know, that's not a bad looking figure. If you stop there. I mean, you know, he's not going to win any art competitions. But he does the job. There's one more step we're going to take. Back in a minute. Okay, so our figure's had a, a little bit of time to dry. Um, these acrylic paints dry so quickly. It doesn't take that long to wait for it to happen. Um, you can see he's not bad. I can see a few bits where I've kind of missed, <laughs> got too close, got in other places. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter because you have the saviour. Whoops. Put it in shot would be good. This is Army Painter Quick Shade Soft Tone Dip. Now I have no, I've no doubt I've lost anybody who was a half decent painter by now, so they're, they're not going to be in total disgust at me um, about using this. Uh, it's dipping is one of those things that gets um, a lot of snobbery against it. People, people are really against it, and. Um, to, to me, I don't understand it. It, it. To me, it just is such um, an easy route to mass-producing figures to, that look wargaming standard. So years ago, I used to actually dip it, dip my figures into this stuff. Take them out, shake them around, and let all the sort of gunk drip off them. The problem with that is that it's very thick stuff, and it does collect very heavily in, in the recesses. And when you stand the figure back up, all the stuff drops to the bottom. So you end up with all the bottom half of the figure has much thicker covering than the top half. And doesn't look fantastic a lot of the time. So what I discovered, and I was watching some video and somebody did this, and I thought, do I want to do that? Um, and he painted it on. He actually just took a brush. Like this cheap brush this is just something from an art shop cheap pack of things and just painted it on there we go just enough to give it a good dousing and you'll get used to the amount you need to use but it's not much but it's enough to cover the figure everywhere on it up under the helmet, on top of the helmet, and the face around where the hair would be if we bothered to paint it. There we go. And this is what's going to make our painting mistakes forgiven. It's going to hide a multitude of sins. There we go. Also, as you see, it begins the point of deadening, deadening down the colours. Can you see that? Bring it a bit closer. So there you go. We've put, you can see it started to collect in various places where we want it to collect. So around the, the fingers, around the arm muscles, around the face, um, around the puts or whatever they're called. Um, just noticed I missed a bit of the shoe there. <laughs> but it's not matter, we're going to hide that with the basing anyway. There you go. Now this stuff takes a long time to dry. Uh, this is the one bit I can't speed up. I, I guess I could get a hair dryer out and try and do that, but you know. 
I reckon it takes me a couple of hours to paint eight to ten figures to this sort of standard to this point. Um, and for me, that's perfect. I can get, you know, a, 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 a squad done for my bolt action armies. Um, I can do um, a company of Napoleon, you know, a, a squad of Napoleonics for my uh, sharp practice, whatever it may be, in a very, very short space of time. And by amending the underspray, you can do all sorts of... I'm just using uh, white spirit here to clean the brush. This stuff is incredibly tacky. Um, yeah, by using different coloured sprays, I can use do different types of troops. So I have um, painted my German troops like this. I've just got um, a, a grey, German grey spray. You can get all these different colours. Sprayed them the same base colour. And then just done exactly the same. Picked out their boots, their shoes, the belts, the gun, um, skin tone, obviously, any other kind of features. And um, same process. Varnish them with the uh, the dip, and then we will do the base, and then we'll spray them with a, um, a varnish, a matte varnish, which will deaden that shininess down. You can see here's a figure that uh, I did earlier just about dry it's still shiny which is what I don't want I want it to have I don't I want it to be matte so I'm going oh, I'm showing them too far up sorry um, this is a new one this is the one I did earlier here's one I did earlier you can see it's accentuated the, the star on his helmet so it comes out pretty nice. So as I say, what my next step, and I'll come back to that in a bit, is uh, once these are thoroughly dried, we're going to do the base, put some um, some sand and gravel and stuff on there. Uh, then we'll spray varnish the figure, which will deaden down the shininess. Will also help have a dual function. It will help to we we'll use PVA glue to stick the stuff on the base. But also the spray also helps to stick that down even more. So it has a dual effect. And then once that done, then we can put some uh, tufts and things to make this figure look even better. And we're done. Literally, that is that simple. Back when these have dried off, guys. Okay, so here we are. Our figures have dried off nicely. They look okay. Oops. Okay, so here we are. Our figures have dried off nicely. I think they look okay. Not too bad. But they're still very shiny. So there's another step to take now. So that is, we're going to work on the bases. So I have here a general purpose PVA glue. Big tub of it. I also have here, this is, um, actually this is Builder's sand or ballast i forget which now um a couple of years ago i built i bought a bag down at the local um builders merchants cost me a couple of quid three quid four quid something like that for a big bag that i'm never going to see my way through unless i suddenly start doing building jobs which is unlikely at my age um and it's got sand in here it's got little tiny pebbles in here had some bigger ones which i've taken out uh, but they're kind of useful for wall building and other things and all you do because it's very damp when you get it out of the builder's merchant you get um some of it you take it out of the bag you lay it on a baking tray stick it in the oven as high as the oven will go for a few minutes and just bake out all the water and all you're left with is this sand and little pebbles as i say i picked out all the bigger pebbles um and i just find this perfect i mean i'm doing sand bases and i'm using real sand so there you go <laughs> authentic so next job for me and these little figures is to just get a bit of a lot of pva so i'm not watering the pva down can you see that am i in the right place there we go i'm not watering the pva down deliberately i'm just slapping it on the base um now, 
again realistically any pretty much any kind of PVA will work here pretty well um, because we're going to varnish it afterwards and that will help to hold the stuff on so at the moment all I'm trying to do is keep it on the base and not on the figure there we go it's one done all we do now dunk it in the Growl, shake up, whoop, <laughs> take the paintbrush out of my mouth, shake off the excess, and leave it to dry. I haven't got any on that one, but you can often get these little little stones that we've just saw in the in the bucket there um, on the base, which is kind of useful and kind of makes it look more authentic. Just make sure I don't paint all over the feet. You paint right up into the feet because you know it's going to be lost in the general look of the figure anyway. Loop it on. Don't have to worry about putting too much on. There we go. Good covering. Back into the into the gravel. There you go. See some of the pebbles of a deer quite nicely there. And those two are ready for the next stage. Okay, so we have, well, we have, I have sprayed these little figures. Whoops, hold it where you can actually see it, it would help. So there you go. And as I said, the benefit of spraying them after you've adhered the um, the sand and whatever flock you're going to put on the base um, is it sticks it down. So I use for my spraying product placement. Uh, this is Army Painter Matte Varnish Anti Shine, and it took all that shine away that we had on the um, from the from the um, dip and has deadened the figure down but you can still see the effect of the dip you can also see the effect of the dry brushing and I think that's not a bad effect all in all and then all you need to do is to um, reach across the camera is to uh, put some basing on it uh, to improve the basing to make it look make them look pretty so what I'm first of all going to do, I'm going to take a couple of the rocks <clears throat> that are in this pot of this uh, dip stuff that I've been using. They're obviously genuine rocks, so no need to paint them because they are rocks. And just stick, oops, a bit more glue than I meant to, never mind. This is Slapdash TV. Just using just regular all-purpose glue. <clears throat> Could use um, super glue. But I probably should have used super glue for the rocks. But again, I I find that it's fairly forgiving actually. Boulder. So there you go, a couple of them stuck on. I'm also going to use, just me rustling around off camera. So I have a, a box of various uh, tufts and what have you that I collect over the years, and I'm going to use this as sort of um, kind of like dung, jungle grass. This is what it is. It's actually from a um, railway shop i believe uh it's called field grass harvest gold quite like it i think it's um it looks quite effective when you use it with your figures here goes some some i used here this bit anyway so 
all you, all you do with this stuff, and the only thing to be warned about with this, it, it's um, it's very fine and it does get everywhere. So you find that your wife might think you're having an affair with some blondie. So take out a bit here, just grip it. Nice shot. Oh. First, I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut. There we go. And I'm just going to snip off the length of this stuff. I'm only going to do it on one of them because I don't want every man to have exactly the same basing scenario. Put that back in the bag, save it for another occasion. I'm going to put it on the one that only had one rock. Again, same basic principle. Dollop of general purpose adhesive glue to you. Nice generous dob. You want the stuff that clear that uh, dries clear. That's the only proviso. And gather up your your, your bits of um, thingy and just stick them face down or end down into the Yahoo glue. Which is not you who glue, but you know what I mean. There you go. Make sure it's uh, standing up right. Always useful to have a pair of tweezers. It's the only time us wall gamers are going to be in the beauty shop. There you go. So you can see I've got a rock on there and some tufts of grass. <clears throat> Next up, um, these are just the sort of commercially available summer um, tufts that you can buy. Buy them online. I buy the six mil mainly, um, but I've got a whole box of them here, and I just use them willy nilly as I feel, I use, uh, you know, as I think they fit and which ones fit the the thing I'm, I'm working on. Again, just use a nice pair of tweezers take them they are self-adhesive now some people glue them specially i've not found it a particular problem with a lot of them just as long as you push them really hard into the into the base let's do another one uh in there to me the basing really covers up so many sins and and actually is what makes your figure look the final result look so much better people notice the basing in my experience almost more than they do the figure um i'm just going to use one other type of tuft i don't i think i bought these at uh, warfare just as a loose pack i don't know who put them out a bit more uh, should we put this one? Don't overdo it, but at the same token, you want it to look like it's not just sand on the base. I think that looks all right. Let's do one more on this fella. I'm going to snuggle it up to the rock, I think. Like that. Once he's dried, I can do a bit of trimming up of the bush, so to speak. Everyone likes a trim bush, don't they? So that's the basin done. And there you go. There's my, there's my figure. Sheets painted. Doesn't take long. I think the effect is pretty reasonable. Certainly good enough to go on my tabletop. Yeah, in true blue, blue Peter fashion. Here's some I made earlier. What do you think about them? Let me try and zoom in if I can. Oops. There you go. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? So there you go. My cheat's guide to painting... Japanese Second World War infantry easily without too much hassle to stay at the stage where you'll get them on the table as quickly as possible. As I do a unit of 
eight or ten of these in this method and it takes me a couple of evenings to get them done and mainly that's the drying time that takes the time it's dead simps okay so quick follow-up so i thought you might be interested to see this is what i've managed to paint up using this very technique since Christmas there's the armor support so you can build an army incredibly quickly not only that have I built the Japanese army is it? How about this? Excuse me shaking. There's my German army. There's a few missing because they're still in the box from last night. Played a game. So some of the Germans I bought ready painted. Badly painted and I've just touched them up a bit. But a lot of them I've done myself. It's the Africa Corps. Again, exactly the same techniques. So you can see, it really simply, you can paint a lot of figures and get them on the table in a pretty good state of affairs. So, hope I inspired you to have a go. If you're not much of a painter, you thought it's just beyond me to get my figures out. There you go, simple, simples. So there you go. There's my little mini unit finished. Um, yeah, simple way, quick way to get war game ready figures as quickly as you possibly can. Um, while still maintaining a reasonable standard. I think these still look pretty good. Um, I'm biased, I know, but I'm not ashamed to play with these on the tabletop. Uh, and that's my main um, goal, is to get them painted and on the table. They're painted uh, figures, they're not just the bare lead or plastic. Anyway, hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, and I'm sorry to discuss the proper painters out there if you if you still manage to survive this long into the video. Um, but, um, you know, I think for those of us who aren't as talented and don't have the patience, then uh, hopefully that gives you an easy route to get battle-ready figures. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And you can always hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my uh, stuff on my channel. In the meantime, enjoy your games. Have fun. May your dice roll high or low, depending on the system, and I'll see you again soon. This is Gamer Don, signing off.